Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on a nice Halloween piece. I've been wanting to do one for a while now, but I figured I'd hold off until it was at least a little bit closer to October. But this is actually officially the last video before Inktober starts, which I am absolutely excited about. I have lots of plans, which I'm actually going to talk a little bit about that in a little bit, because there were some things that I was thinking about for Inktober that I wanted to balance out with this piece, actually. There's some connections there, so I will talk about that. I will just say that, yes, I am definitely doing Inktober. I will have videos up Wednesdays and Saturdays. That's my current plan for now. And I'll also be streaming in between that, where I'll have Tuesdays and Thursdays that are stream days. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about starting into Inktober and realizing some of these really big goals that I have. I'm also going to be publishing a book with all of my Inktober illustrations, just like I did last year. There will be a Kickstarter for that. So stay tuned for that. I'll, I'll let you guys know all the information as we get a little bit closer to the launch. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this painting. Okay, so the first big difference about this piece from, from my normal piece is that I'm actually working on hot press paper. And I think after working on this piece, it's... I think it's going to be a new goal of mine to tackle hot press paper and figure out how to use it well. So there are a few things that come with hot press paper if you haven't used it before. Hot press paper is a very smooth watercolor paper. It basically has no tooth, which it's surprising how hard it can be to get a flat wash on such a flat surface, but it's true. It kind of dries in a very different way from when you're using cold press paper, I've noticed. If I start on one edge with cold press, but I can get the, f the whole s area that I wanna paint filled in relatively quickly, I find that it usually dries pretty evenly and it does a pretty good job at holding the water and then drying as one unit. But when it comes to hot press, I find that the beginning source dries a lot faster and then as it's drying, I, I notice that more and more of the paint pools onto the opposite side of it. So I'll have a slightly lighter spot at the beginning where I started painting it and a darker spot at the end and a few other kind of weirdnesses about hot press paper. And that's, that's something that just kind of comes with the territory. I've done a lot of research and a lot of people just kind of deal with that kind of a thing. So hot press paper behaves very differently, but I really love how paint mixes on top of it. It's a lot more free to create these really blended looks. And when I'm intentionally getting textures, I, I think that they look really beautiful, especially with granulating colors. And it's a lot more enjoyable to do the line work on hot press paper. It's basically like doing it on Bristol board or normal paper or something just very smooth. So hot press paper, uh, I mean, cold press paper, there we go, I gotta get it straight. But cold press paper, because it has so much tooth and texture, when I'm using my favorite implement for inking, which is the Micron pens, I, I have to push a little bit harder and kind of fight through that tooth of the paper a lot more. So I find that I don't have nearly as crisp lines and my hand, if, I, if I'm not taking care of it, it can end up a lot more sore. So... The hot press paper has a lot of benefits. It's just like a little bit harder and trickier to use. And every time I do use it for, for a full painting like this, I always run into some of those frustrations where I get to a point where I'm like, this is just not behaving the way I think it should. I think it's getting much, much worse than I hoped it would be. But, but in the end, I noticed that I'm usually still pretty happy with the results. So so after this, after Inktober, I would really like to spend some more quality time with some hot press paper so I can figure it out and see if I can learn some, some hopefully some trips, tricks, that is, tricks or techniques that I can use when I'm using. And that was my favorite part, painting the background. I actually think, and this is painful to know, but I knew as soon as I did that second layer, is that the first layer of the background, I really love the texture. And when I added the second one, it obscured a lot of it without really adding to it. So that was, I think, my first big mistake. I still really love the texture of the background and the colors that it has, but the, the raw blending of the colors in that first background, I think would have been better. So that's a lesson learned for me. And I think I've, I've made that mistake a couple times after I've really 
tried to figure out this kind of a technique for getting really textured backgrounds. So maybe this time that lesson will actually stick. But but I do think that's true. I think being able to lay down the colors where I basically want them in the first pass and let them do their own thing and then leave it is a bit of a skill that I need to learn. But I will learn it. I will remember it next time and not get overboard on wanting to make it better and more textured. But but yeah, I, I loved working on the background. It was really enjoyable for me. I did kind of that method that I talked about in my last painting, I believe, where I made sure that I applied quite a bit of water so that there was just a lot of fluidity to when I was starting to add the pigment and the paint on top of it. It really allowed that paint to, to play with each other and, and mingle and create these really beautiful watercolor textures. I did also make sure that I used my masking fluid between the figures and the background, but I've actually been thinking lately that I think I'd like to use the masking fluid a little bit more heavily beyond that phase. I find that I really only use it when I'm painting the background to define around the characters, so I don't paint on the characters. But there are a lot of applications once I move on from that step that I could get a lot of use from, like masking off areas like the eyes or places that I know that I want to keep significantly lighter, but I'm also going to be painting around it a lot. So yeah, I think that that's a step that that I've slowly warmed up to. I always didn't like doing the masking fluid step. It just seemed really tedious and it took a long time, but it, in my experience at least, really adds to a piece. I find that I can get much cleaner and better results. I also found, and this is maybe an obvious um, observation or suggestion, but I've realized that before when I would do the masking fluid, I would kind of apply it in a in a rough way, I guess, where I would put it down and hope that it filled in the white area, but I wasn't really thinking about the edge around within the line work. So the lines that I use aren't 100% opaque and they're not 100% black. So I'm still going to see a little bit of of give and, and take from where I don't perfectly fill it in. So I'm trying to treat the masking fluid a little bit more like it's its own paint job. So then I go around and very carefully with careful brush strokes, follow the line work. And I find that I'm much happier with the cleanliness of the results when I'm using the masking fluid that way. And for the colors, as always, I did lots of color comps. This one was the one that I was most happy with. I really loved how the greens and the orange had a really festive Halloween feeling. And I also really liked how the orange felt like it could be a sunset. And then I added the pine trees and then it really just cemented that, which which I love. I'm trying to do that more. Create kind of these abstract, very textural backgrounds, but ones that still have a feeling of place. Uh, but I also made sure that when I was doing color comps, there was a certain level of difference between the two different characters. So in my color comps, I wanted to make sure that he was a little bit more on the cool green side and she was a little bit more on the yellowy green side. But I did kind of make a mistake where I ended up letting the values on some areas that I wanted to be lighter so there would be more contrast. I let those get a little bit more dark so that everything ended up a lot closer to the middle ground of values. So everything's a little bit more homogenous as far as color and value, value I should say, as far as value goes. So that's always something that I've struggled with and I'm just going to keep on struggling and learning and fighting with that till hopefully I get a better grasp on how to make sure that I control the values in the way that I want. I find that color comps, I tend to get a lot better values because I think I'm just going at it with like one pass and thinking about what exactly is that value and then I go for it. But when it comes time to the do the actual finished painting, I do a lot more layers. So it's a lot easier to do two layers or one layer just a little bit too dark or a little bit too too much of one color, whatever the case may be. But yeah, that's that's all just a learning process. I, I do still really love how the colors ended up together and the mood on this piece, so I am still happy with it. And let's just talk a little bit about Inktober. So so for Inktober, I, I love playing with the values of grays and blacks and whites, so a black and white piece. But this year, I am definitely going to be using pops of color and some select pieces will be in color. 
so I think that it's going to be a lot more fun for me and hopefully for you guys to watch as I'm working on that. But I think that that'll add just a little bit more interest and variety. And when it comes time to doing just completely black and white pieces, I will feel like that was a very intentional purpose and that was the the best use of that. So, so that's the first change for this year. There is also going to be a bit of a story throughout all of my Inktober, which I'm really excited about. I, I've been thinking about it for a while and I think it's going to help me feel a little bit more connected with Inktober, but it's also going to check off a few of these really big career goals that I have, which is to move more into a storytelling kind of a, an artist. So I'm really excited about that. Like I mentioned, though, there will be a Kickstarter soon. I don't know exactly when it will launch, probably about a week into Inktober, but I will absolutely let you guys know. And that is it for today. I do have the painting available, but I also have prints of this one as well. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I love the Halloween feel of it. So, so I will be adding the prints of this piece to my shop. There's a link down in the description that'll take you right over there. There's also a link to my Patreon, which is a wonderful way to help support me in this channel. I also have a link to my Twitch account if you want to hang out with me and paint and sketch with me live. But that is, again, about it. So I will be back on Wednesday with an Inktober piece for you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then.